will continue our discussion on closure properties of regular languages. The first thing I would like to do is to uh, once more review the result that we talked about in the last lecture, which is uh, one of the results that uh, regular languages are closed under closed under the operation of reversals. And uh, we recall by reversal we meant firstly we can talk of any string x and then we can talk of its reversal. So, for example, if the string is 0 0 1 then the reverse reverse string is just writing the string the other way. And the reversal of a language L is all those x's such that reverse of x is in L. And we gave a very simple kind of example that suppose L had 0 0 and 1 1 0, then L reversal is going to be 0 0 and 0 1 1. And we also indicated we can prove this property that is regular languages are closed under reversals in two ways. One was uh, taking a DFA for a regular language L and then reverse all its arrows the directions of the arrows in the transition diagram have a new initial state with epsilon transitions to the final old final states of the DFA that accepted that language L and have a new final state as the old final old initial state of the DFA. So, that is something that we discussed. Now, another way we had proved it or we, we indicated that this result can be proved by using regular languages. So, the proof by regular expressions i would like to dwell on it for a little while because this I, this proof idea is quite natural and simple the step one in the proof was for every regular expression say E define E r called the reversal of E. Then step 2 was what we intend doing is the step 2 that if the language accepted by E is L, this implies that the language sorry I should not have said accepted by language accepted by a regular expression or should have said the language denoted by the regular expression E. Supposing if it that language is L, then the language denoted by E R, which is defined in the in first step is the reversal of the language L. And what step 1 was, was to define E R. So, that was a definition of E R. Step 2 we kind of very quickly indicated what we meant, but let us now go over this once more. So, definition of E R look what we are trying to do is to give what is E R for every regular expression 
you recall that whenever we talk of regular expression, we keep some alphabet in mind. So, regular expressions over an alphabet. So, let us say the alphabet is some sigma and so this definition is for this alphabet sigma and then the in this definition there is a base case this definition itself is an inductive definition so therefore it has a base case and an induction case so base case was you recall what are the basis for regular expressions e over alphabet sigma there are three base cases so, E can be in the base case either it can be empty or it can be epsilon or it can be a symbol A where A is in sigma. Right. Um, I put the underline here to denote that these are regular expressions. Corresponding E R same okay. Now, notice in step 2 I am supposed to prove this that if the language denoted by E is L, then language denoted by E of R is L of R, reversal of L. Now, what are the reverse, what are the languages denoted by these three base case regular expression? This of course, denotes the empty lang empty set, this denotes just the language with the string epsilon, this denotes the language with just the string con consisting of a single symbol which is A. Now, such each of these languages on reversal clearly will get back the same language and therefore, this is true this statement is true for the base case having defined E and E R for these base cases in this manner. We can claim that this assertion is true for the base case. Now, let us take just one of the inductive part case. And now, remember once we have defined the base cases, I need to say how, what about larger and larger regular expressions. And we remember that lar any other regular expression could have been formed either by concatenation or by plus operation or by Kleene star, star operation. Right. So, you know inductive cases we had said that if E 1 and E 2 are regular expressions, then E 1 plus E 2, E 1 E 2 and E 1 star all these are also regular expressions. Right. Now, what we need to do in our attempt to prove this assertion? having proved the base case. Now, we have to say that suppose E 1 or E 2 are two regular expression, then inductively I can assume that regular expression right. And now, the assertion will say about E 1 R and E 2 R the following right. We will say that language denoted by E 1 its reversal its language denoted by E 1 reversal. So, let us let us just spend one moment on this. From E 1, we obtained E 1 reversal this syntactically right by the rules that I 
discussed last time, but maybe I will just discuss it once more here for one particular case. And this is stating that inductively we can assume these two facts. So, let us just looking at that, let us just take the how the induction inductive case will go for one interesting uh, part of the three cases namely concatenation. So, we know that E 1 E 2 is a regular expression because E 1 is a regular expression and E 2 is a regular expression. right? Now, we defined remember that definition of E 1 E 2 this this regular expression its reversal was E 2 reversal followed by E 1 reversal. And now, this is how we had defined reversal for a concatenation case. Now, inductively what we have, what do I need to show now? To show that the language denoted by E 1 E 2 reversal is the reversal of the language denoted by E 1 E 2. And now, we use these two assumptions, which these two assumptions are from the fact that we are proving this inductively. So, we can assume given a larger regular expression having done carried out the induction so far that this assertion is true up to some length and let us see E 1 and E 2 their lengths are within that the standard induction uh, that you do on length of the regular expression. So, you see what is the language denoted by E 1 E 2? it is supposing I have a string in E 1 E 2 in this language, then such a string is there in that language, because that string can be seen as concatenation of two strings. So, as we are saying that suppose z is in this language, language denoted by E 1 E 2, you can see this that clearly z is in the language denoted by the regular expression u 1 e 2, if and only if there are x and y right, such that x firstly that z is the concatenation of x and y and x is in the language denoted by E 1 and y is in the language denoted by E 2. Right? Clearly, I mean that we know from our understanding of regular expression that when I concatenate to regular expression, then this is what is the meaning of concatenation for regular expressions, the language denoted by the concatenated regular expression can be seen in this manner. And remember we need to prove this. So, what I need to show that z in L if and only if this, if and only if I would like to show this, if and only if the reversal of the language z r is in the language denoted by reversal of this but 
by definition e 1 e 2 reversal of that as a regular expression this is our definition this is same as I can re I can just look at that definition and now you can see I can replace this by e 2 r e 1 r right. Now, by the way what is z of r? z of r is clearly z was x y. So, you you must read it from this side y to x. So, y r x of r. Now, because y is in L e 2 language denoted by e 2 y of r will be in the language denoted by e 2 r. and x of r will be in the language denoted by e 1 of r. Right? So, this is true and therefore, I can say this, this is proved for the concatenation case. Other two cases for induction over regular expressions are start and of course, plus and these two cases are also in fact, plus is simpler star is also simpler than this. So, that completes the proof in detail that indeed. So, overall idea was that I wanted to prove this regular languages are closed under reversal. So, you take a regular language. So, let us say suppose L is regular and then because L is regular we can say let E be E be the regular expression such that language denoted by E is this language L. And then, because of what we have shown, we have essentially we have shown that language denoted by E r, which is defined in this manner is going to be L r. Right? So, you take a regular language, its reversal is denoted by a regular expression. There is a regular expression, which denotes the reversal language right and every regular expression denotes only a regular language so this language lr is also therefore regular and that is what we needed to prove we have seen some closure properties for regular languages but we still may need to like to answer this question that why study such closure properties. There are various reasons. One, one reason is this. That suppose, I have two classes. Let us say C 1. This is a class of languages. By that, now you, you know what we mean is C 1 is a set containing languages, some languages. So, some class of languages C 1 and C 2 is another class of languages. Now, one big question is that these classes might have been defined in some manner. And we would like to know whether these two classes are same, whether you know or not. So, one way of proving that they are not same is that, that suppose I manage to show that C 1 is let us say C 1 is closed under an operation some let us say something let me just denote this operation like this and c2 is not closed under the same operation then immediately I have that the two classes could not be identical. 
So, this is called separation of two classes C 1 and C 2 can be proved finding out an op, op some operation could be unary could be binary such that that one class is closed under that operation the other class is not closed under that operation. Okay, so, this is I can actually illustrate this that we have seen regular expressions are closed under complementation right. So, C 1 if you take regular languages that class is closed under complementation and now another class which we are going to study soon that is the class of context free languages. This set consists of all languages which are context free that class we will see that is not closed under complementation and that immediately tells us that these two classes are different. Of course, this there are there are we will see uh, you know in more direct manner that class of regular languages and class of context free languages are different. So, this is, but I just wanted to tell you this is one reason people study closure properties and for there are classes whose separation have been whose separation has been proved only using closure properties. Now, one more reason which we can see uh, in our context quite easily that some proofs might be done simply using closure properties. So, let, let me give you an example here. Consider this language L which is over the alphabet binary alphabet such that the number of zeros in x is different from the number of ones So, all those binary strings where when you count the number of zeros and number of ones these two numbers become come out to be different. So, we are collecting all those strings and putting them in this language L and we would like to show L is not real. And one method we know of make providing such proofs is by pumping lemma. We can prove this through pumping lemma. Let me just indicate the proof. Proof by pumping lemma. Remember that pumping lemma proofs start with so it is a proof by contradiction we say let L be regular. Then we say let K be the pumping lemma constant for L and now the way that such proofs will go that I will take some z which is in L right whose length is greater than equal to k and get z 1 on pumping. z such that z 1 is not in it. And it is not immediate at least all, all the other pumping lemma proofs we had seen things were pretty clear what the z you should take and what is the pumping you should do. So, that you get a string in not in the language. Now, here you can take 
z to be let's say 0 k 1 k factorial plus k. And you see it is not I will not give the details of the proof, but you should be able to see this. You see what is happening is that now the u v part is here and it is the v part which we pump. So, v is some number which is between 1 and k that is your v. All such numbers are divisible by k factor. So, what you can do, so in fact let me let me let me indicate this. So, this 0 k is u v right u v let us say length of v is t right and uh, so now I can write this as as 0 k minus t then 0 t this is your u v. Well, there is something else here also u v 0 k is u v and some part of w right. So, let me let me write it as 0 l u v are some part of w and that part of w which is in 0. So, part of w this is a this I write it as 0 k and now because this t is there which is the v part which you can pump you should be able to prove that you see for example, if you pump twice then what is the length of the string that we will get the only zeros part it will be k plus because you have pumped this part twice. So, this part will become 0 to t. So, k plus t right. So, in this manner if you pump some r plus 1 times what you are going to get is some you can see that it will become k plus some r t and since t divides k factorial and this k k part will cancel and therefore, I will be able to get a z 1 which is not in the language because then the number of zeros will become exactly equal to this. I leave the details, but the point I am trying to make is this is not a very immediate thing. On the other hand, so let me just show you a simpler proof using closure properties. Let me now give the simpler proof of this fact that this language L is not regular using closure properties. Simpler proof by this proof also starts by assuming that L is regular. Let right. Now, we say then L complement is also regular. Right. Now, how did I get this fact from this fact? Because regular languages are closed under complementation. So, therefore, L complement is also regular. Right. However, what is L complement? You can see L complement will be the set of all strings in which number of zeros and number of ones are equal. So, L complement is all strings over the binary alphabet such that number of zeros and number of ones are equal in x. Okay. 
So, this is L com. Now, since L complement is regular, this implies L complement intersection 0 star 1 star is also regular. You remember 0 star 1 star is the talking of all strings which are of the form some number of zeros followed by some number of ones. This is L complement. Why can I why what is the reason I can claim this that L complement intersection 0 star 1 star is regular? L complement is regular 0 star 1 star is this language is also regular. Regular languages are closed under intersection. So, therefore, this language is regular, but what is this language L complement intersection 0 star 1 star this language is nothing but 0 n 1 n n right and do you see the contradiction? because this is a very simple language to prove that this is not regular. So, I can say we know this language L complement intersection 0 star 1 star is not regular. And therefore, we have come to a contradiction. Why? Because I started with a regular language L and we did some closure properties operations, operations which preserve regularity and we got a language which is not regular, which means our assumption must be wrong and therefore, I claim therefore, L is not regular. See here I got a contradiction therefore, L is not so, you will definitely see that this proof is much simpler than <coughs> directly applying the pumping lemma. Firstly, how does one figure out such a string? You have to kind of rack your brains to find such a string and then we need to you know argue once of course, we found that string then that argument was also little involved. But here the, all the arguments were much simpler because we used closure properties. You recall we have four different representations for regular languages. What are they? We can represent DFAs. This is one way of representing regular languages. NFAs, right? And then you have NFAs with epsilon transitions and regular expressions. The point I am saying that we can take a regular language L. I can represent that regular language by providing a DFA that would accept that regular language and an NFA which would accept the same regular language, possibly an NFA with epsilon transition for the same regular language. And of course, I can give a regular expression which will denote the same language. Now, what we are interested in is in knowing can I go from one representation to another and what is the time complexity? How efficiently can I do these things? Now, by the way DFA to NFA, DFA to NFA with epsilon transition. 
these are immediate right, because all after all every DFA is an NFA, why we have said this NFA says simply that from every state there can be 0 or more number of transitions on a symbol. DFA just uses one transition per symbol from a state exactly one transition. So, that is fine the DFA is also an NFA, NFA is also an NFA with epsilon transitions. So, these conversions DFA to NFA, DFA to NFA with epsilon transitions or NFAs to NFAs with epsilon transitions, they are uh, not of interest, because one is a more generalized version of the other. NFA is a more generalized version of DFA, NFAs with epsilon transitions is a more generalized version of NFAs. So, that is uh, these, these, this way it is simple, but what about going from NFA to GFA. We know the construction and we also know that if an, there can be NFAs such that, so let me write it down, there can be NFAs with n states such that any DFA accepting or let me just use equivalent DFA, you understand what I mean, any equivalent DFA that means, that new DFA has accept the same language as the NFA. So, there can be what I am saying is there can be NFAs with n states such that any equivalent DFA will have at least 2 to the power n states. And we have seen an example like you know let us say kth bit from the right end is 1 for binary strings you recall that example, NFA had you know not too many states, but the corresponding DFA had 2 to the power n states and this is happening again because of the subset construction going from DFA to NFA. We recall that our way of doing that was the DFA will have the number of the set of states of DFA will be set of all subset of states of NFA. So, that way there is an exponential blow up as you go from NFA to DFA, there can be such exponential blow up in general. So, this is an exponential algorithm and that is you cannot do better than that because of this fact. What about going from NFAs with epsilon transitions to DFAs. See, the only different thing between NFAs and NFAs with epsilon transitions is that we need to take closure, right, of states or set of states. The closure is not an expensive operation. However, because anyway we are going from NFA, so in this case also that subset constructions will be there. On top of that, there will be that closure operation, but closure operation is efficient right, because it is kind of reachability. The closure of a state is the set of all states reachable from that state using only epsilon transitions. So, reachability can be done in efficient time and therefore, this also however, because we are going from NFA to DFA the number of states can blow up. So, this is again exponential time. What about regular expression to DFA? This actually we what we did was what we had proved 
was this that you can go from a regular expression we can get an NFA and that can be done quite efficiently. Recall that, that, that inductive proof that we gave that we, we gave NFAs for uh, you know base cases of regular expressions and then we showed for the inductive cases how the NFAs will be built up from the component NFAs of the smaller regular expression. But this can be done efficiently. So, in fact, in linear time, but let me just write this conversion can be done in polynomial time. can be done efficiently. Now, remember we also discussed going from DFA to regular expressions and same idea can be can be used for NFAs to regular expression or NFAs to epsilon NFAs with epsilon transitions to regular expression. What about this? algorithm. Remember, what we did was we took a DFA and then we wrote a number of regular expressions which are of this kind that if the DFA was Q sigma delta Q 0 f and I will just indicate just so that you remember what we did that we took the set of states as q 1, q 2, q n and we define regular expressions of this form r i j k to be denoting all those strings over sigma which can take the machine m from q i to q j without passing through any states whose you know this uh, this uh, number whose number is larger than k right. We build this thing and then finally, when we got r i j n using some of those r i j n's we define uh, we got the regular expression which acts, which is which denotes the same language as the language accepted by m and how what did we do we obtained r i j k s from r i j k minus ones and here if you go back to that proof the length of r i j k length can increase by a factor of 4. Right? Because let me just write it an R i j k was defined to be firstly R i j k minus 1 the regular expression for this plus r i k k minus 1 r k k k minus 1 this whole star then r k j k minus 1. So, you see if the regular expressions with superscript k minus 1s we had then we could build the regular expressions with superscript k, but in the process 1, 2, 3, 4 such things we are using. So, in this in this definition the length can increase by a factor of 4 and so therefore, see what happens is as you go from here to here 
how many times this factor of 4 increase happens? As many times there are number of states. So, you have a 4, a four to the power n order algorithm. So, this is we cannot do anything better going from d f a to regular expression or from n f a to regular expression there can be a blow up of exponential blow up in the length of the expression and therefore, uh, the algorithm is exponential. 